Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we'll continue our discussion related to sensors and transducers and we will extend our discussion on magnetostrictive transducers. So far we have discussed its application for force and pressure measurement and for the measurement of acceleration. The previous video, the magnetostrictive accelerometer. So in this video, we are going to discuss its application for the measurement of torque. Okay, so before that, just again a quick recapitulation of the basic concepts. So the magnetostrictive transducers, they operate on the principle of reverse magnetostrictive effect, which is called as Villari effect. So what is the magnetostrictive effect first? So it is the basic principle the phenomena in which a magnetostrictive ferromagnetic material when exposed to a fluctuating magnetic field it uh, causes a change in the dimensions of that material shape size length area all that it changes so change in magnetic field causes a change in dimensions okay so magnetic characteristics causes a change in the physical characteristics okay so the reverse magnetostrictive effect which is called as the Villari effect it is when it is that that particular magnetostrictive ferromagnetic material is exposed to some uh, mechanical uh, force, pressure, stress. So when it is exposed to that, when exposed to fluctuating pressure, stress or uh, torque as in this case, it responds to it with the change in its magnetic behavior, magnetic characteristics such as susceptibility, permeability. So in this case we are interested in the permeability change. So here change in force, pressure, torque, acceleration, movement, everything is interrelated. So that causes a change in magnetic characteristics or behavior. So please watch the previous uh, videos on force and pressure measurement and acceleration measurement so that there we have also discussed in detail about these things. So we are particularly interested in the change in permeability, okay, relative permeability mu r, okay, this. So how the change in relative permeability because of the application of these uh, force pressure torque can be translated into an electrical signal through this. So we know that the ferromagnetic material which is uh, used in these uh, transducers, it is either in the form of a solenoid or toroid, okay. This is a toroid and this is a solenoid which is basically a ferromagnetic material with a number of turns of wire closely wound. So, the magnetic flux density due to a solenoid or toroid, it is given by this relationship, mu0, mu r, n i, where mu0 is the absolute permeability or permeability of free space, mu r is the relative permeability, n is the number of turns of wire, i is the current. So, we know absolute permeability is fixed, it is constant, it cannot be changed, number of turns of wire is constant current is kept constant from our side, from the design side. So when all these three parameters are kept constant, then this magnetic flux density and this relative permeability, these are the two interrelated parameters. So any change, increase or decrease in relative permeability causes a proportional increase or decrease in magnetic flux density. Then when magnetic flux density uh, changes, the magnetic flux 
also changes as per this relationship the dot product of the magnetic field vector and the area element vector be a cos theta that is the magnetic flux and when magnetic flux changes then as per faraday's law an emf is induced which is given by this n d phi by dt okay where the emf is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux there is a uh, the direction is opposite as per the lenz law but here we are only interested in the magnitude so <clears throat> the basic design the construction is the same which consists of uh, this whole setup where we have the uh, protective casing we have the solenoid and toroid setup and we have a point where the impact is caused but here there is a slight modification in that in that sensor that that particular magnetostrictive sensor is situated at a certain distance away from the point of impact okay so let's say this is the point of impact then we want to measure the torque so it will be at a certain distance let's say d away from it the force is applied here the impact is here and we want to measure the torque from this point of rotation okay this so we know this is the force applied f and this is the point from which the perpendicular distance is d so torque as we all know is the rotating power of a force okay that can cause an object to rotate about a certain axis that power so that torque is given by force into perpendicular distance so this design consideration is used so this whole setup the magnetostrictive either with the help of a solenoid or a toroid that setup is this this box this uh, container encapsulation whatever it is and it is kept through some kind of a lever arrangement or connecting rod arrangement which is free to rotate is at a certain distance d from the point where we want to measure torque the rotating power then force is applied on the sensor then with the application of force the the material is stressed then it causes a change in relative permeability change in relative permeability causes a change in flux density okay then change in flux density causes a change in magnetic flux okay and then change in magnetic flux causes a change in emf so this change in emf is a measure of the force okay and then we know the distance from the point where we want to measure the torque the rotating power simply we multiply that because that d is constant it cannot change so that gives us the torque and the final output is in the form of torque it is calibrated in the form of torque newton meter whatever units we want to have so all these things force and pressure measurement acceleration uh, torque in the future you know in the future videos we'll be discussing about strain measurement also they are just you know employing certain formulas to use and recalibrating them suppose we have this basic principle force is equal to mass into acceleration pressure or stress is equal to force by area then this principle torque is equal to force into perpendicular distance so in this case or in all the above cases so one thing is constant in accelerometer the mass was kept constant in case of force and pressure measurement the contact area the impact point area that was fixed so it can be used to measure force as well as pressure okay calibration is done in that way and in this case also we are measuring force but this the distance from the point of impact where the torque has to be measured this d d the dis, dis, uh, distance separation that is constant so we can measure torque because this is constant here
okay this so all is using the same principle in different ways and recalibrating the instrument okay so this is the basic setup and in some cases we have multiple uh, transducers this whole setup connected at different angles especially four transducers connected at 45 degree with respect to each other so that we can measure the torque at different angles same can be done for force or pressure measurement and acceleration also okay this i missed in the previous videos same is applicable for torque for force and pressure measurement as well as acceleration where we have multiple sensors connected about a certain point at certain angle with respect to each other so this is the four sensor a uh, four transducer setup which is connected at 45 degree angle with respect to each other okay so this is the thing so here the only difference between the previous uh, uh, discussions is this setup where the sensor is placed at a certain fixed distance from the point from where we want to measure the rotating power the torque that is fixed so the sensor measures the force then it is recalibrated taking into account this fixed distance as per this relationship tau is, torque is equal to force into perpendicular distance and the output is given in that format okay everything else is the same so the sequence of events first force is applied okay that force causes a change in relative permeability the relative permeability causes a change in magnetic flux density magnetic flux density causes a change in magnetic flux magnetic flux change causes an emf to be produced as per faraday's law and that emf which is in the form of voltage or current gives us a measure of the force and this formula is used force into perpendicular distance there is internal circuitry there which allows us to multiply this constant value and we get the final result as torque output as torque okay so this is the basic principle so let us try to understand the uh, basic principle from a three dimensional perspective so here as i said this is the magnetostrictive sensor which is placed at a certain distance from the point where we want to measure the torque so this is the the connecting rod is called as the rotating arm so here now so here if we rotate it it will rotate like this so if the force is coming vertically downwards and if it is vertically upwards then it will be like this okay so like this this is the whole setup so this is the magnetostrictive transducer this is the point from where we want to measure the uh, torque it can be extended also and this is the connecting arm the rotating arm so it rotates about this axis okay like this when the force is downwards when it is upwards and in the other setup where we have four sensors connected at 45 degree arrangement with respect to each other it can be with respect to any direction okay any direction like this then like this and then like this okay any direction x y z okay so this is the basic principle okay